Ladies and gentlemen, a very good day to you all and a very warm welcome to Government House Yarralumla. My name is Mark Fraser. I'm the Governor General's Official Secretary. As the badge around my neck signifies with its cross quills, I also serve as Secretary of the Council for the Order of Australia, who recommend appointments and awards in the Order's General Division to the Governor General, who is also Chancellor of the Order and the Principal Knight of the Order. I also serve as Secretary to the Australian Bravery Decorations Council, the body which makes recommendations to the Governor-General for bravery awards. I would particularly like to acknowledge among our distinguished guests today, Senator the Honourable James McGrath, representing the Prime Minister, Air Chief Marshal Mark Binskin, <coughs> Chief of Defence Force, Commodore Alison Gay Norris, representing the Chief of Nav Navy, Brigadier Jake Elwood, representing Chief of Army, Air Marshal Leo Davies, Chief of Air Force, Miss Karen Vinecamp, representing the Commissioner of the Australian Public Service, Deputy Commissioner Ramsey Jabor, representing the Commissioner of the Australian Federal Police, Mr Mark Brown, representing the Commissioner of the ACT Emergency Services, Mrs Elizabeth Grant, representing the Order of Australia Association, Mr Andrew Kendall, National President of the Australian Bravery Association, and Mr Mark Hoskinson, National President of the Bravery Institute of Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a special day, not only for recipients, but for their families, friends and the community. It's a day when we celebrate a diverse range of impressive achievement and service. As staff at Government House, my colleagues and I are privileged to play a small part in the recognition and celebration of that achievement. I hope that we can help make today an occasion that you will all recall with pride for a long time to come. Shortly, I'll invite you to stand as His Excellency the Governor-General enters the room. Please remain standing for the singing of the first verse of the Australian National Anthem. You're all welcome to join in and the words are on page three of your program. The investiture will then begin and proceed in the order listed in your programs. After I have read their names and citations, the recipients will enter the room from the doorway to my right, and after they have been invested, they will leave through the centre aisle of the room to take their seats at the back of the room. At this point, you might like to show your appreciation with a short round of applause for each recipient. At the conclusion of the investiture ceremony, the Governor-General will address us all. He'll then leave the room and recipients will join him on the state entrance steps for an official photograph. Following the formal photograph today, there will be a reception uh, in the beautiful uh, weather today outside on the lakeside lawn. You're most welcome at that stage to take uh, photogra uh, photographs of yourselves, family members and friends and uh, with the Governor General. Finally, some housekeeping, as we've mentioned. Uh, please, no photos during the ceremony itself. You are most welcome to use your cameras uh, during the reception today. We are broadcasting live to Australia and around the world, uh, so hopefully we have lots of family and friends tuned in. Thank you to the CIT for making this possible. Now, it just uh, waits for us to relax and enjoy this special occasion and to be joined by the Governor-General shortly. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of His Excellency the Governor-General of the Commonwealth of Australia. Thank you. Please be seated. <coughs> Your Excellency. To be presented with the insignia of his appointment as a companion in the General Division, Emeritus Professor Lewis Mander. For eminent service to science through pioneering contributions to organic chemistry in the field of plant growth hormones, to higher education as an academic researcher and author, and to national and international scientific societies. Professor Manda is an extraordinary scientist and one of the most accomplished synthetic organic chemists of his generation. He has worked selflessly for over four decades to provide researchers with the tools to better understand plant development and has substantially assisted in ensuring global food security. His training of students is legendary, with many now occupying significant scientific, commercial and industrial positions around the world. Professor Manda's achievements are most deserving of this nation's gratitude and highest recognition. Emeritus Professor Lewis Manda appointed a companion of the order. Good morning. Good morning, Sir Peter. You've been associated with the Australian National University since uh, 1975, I yes, think. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and you've been a fellow of the Australian Academy of Science since '83. Would that be yeah, about that right? Be right? Yeah, and uh, you're, you've got a, had a storied life. You're legendary, of course, in the scientific community. And the other thing one might say about you, I think you've been awarded uh, various. Uh, prestigious awards on five other occasions, particularly within the uh, arena of science. So you are a, uh, an Australian of great eminence and we congratulate you. Well done. Appointed a companion in the general division, Professor Philip Petit. For eminent service to philosophy through contributions to moral and political theory as a distinguished academic and as a leader of public debate on social, economic and environmental issues. Professor Pettit is an internationally renowned scholar and philosopher whose primary work has been in the field of political philosophy. He's recognised globally for his contributions to public and academic debate on political morality public freedom, governance and models of democracy. He has mentored numerous students and works collaboratively with distinguished members of the academic community. Professor Pettit is amongst the world's most influential thinkers and we are most proud to honour him today. Professor Philip Pettit, appointed a companion of the order. Well, you're extremely widely quoted. Lots of publications, but uh, some very significant publications. The Spanish 
Prime Minister re relied on your book about republicanism as his sort of political bible. That's something on your CV, isn't it? <laughs> and I was impressed by this one. You've been named one of the 25 greatest thinkers of the world. Wow. <laughs> Any, anybody feeling inadequate here? <laughs> and you have this wonderful association, academic standing on a whole range of universities, uh, Princeton, uh, Sydney Uni, of course, uh, Queens and Belfast, a uh, whole range of universities. ANU. Oh, oh, never forgetting ANU. <laughs> How could one? But in any event, I wanted to uh, paint you as the uh, international figure which you are. We're most proud of you. Well done. <laughs> Appointed an officer in the General Division, Dr. Rosalie Balkan, for distinguished through roles with a range of organisations to the improvement of global shipping transport safety and standards and to education as an academic and author. Dr. Balkan is highly regarded by her peers, both nationally and internationally, for her expertise and practice in international law. She has significantly assisted the international community in achieving greater safety at sea, protecting the marine environment and from marine pollution, and creating a widely implemented system of international maritime law. Dr. Balkan's effective leadership of a range of preeminent organisations has significantly benefited Australia, and today we salute her. Dr. Rosalie Balkan of the order. Good morning. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, International Maritime Organisation, uh, you were uh, uh, an executive director on that, and then you became um, the uh, Assistant General Secretary or the General Secretary. Yeah, Secretary yeah. General. Uh, Secretary General, okay. And the, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it comes to the same thing, yeah. <laughs> um, then the uh, World, uh, the Maritime uh, University, is it? The World Maritime University? Yes, that's right. And you've got academic standing in uh, Australia, UK, South Africa, and for a time you were the Acting Discrimination Commissioner here in the ACT. That's right. What a storied life you've had so far. Keep it up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appointed an officer in the General Division, Professor Hugh Davies, for distinguished service to Australia Papua New Guinea relations, particularly in the area of the geological sciences and to education as an academic, author and researcher. Professor Davies is an esteemed geologist and earth scientist who has contributed extensively to the higher education, mining and petroleum industries in Papua New Guinea for over 40 years. His dedication to the understanding of the geology of Papua New Guinea and his achievements have facilitated the minerals and energy boom that the country enjoys today. Through his commitment and long service, Professor Davies has done much to strengthen the ties between Australia and our nearest neighbour. Professor Hugh Davies appointed an Officer of the Order. Good morning. Now, you had a long period as our chief geologist uh, here in Australia, didn't you? I was not chief, I was one of the Indians. Whoa. <laughs> Sitting bull. <laughs> but you were the chief geologist up in Papua New Guinea. Yeah. 
And you wrote, you've written over 100 publications, but there's these two books, particularly that one addresses the tsunami yeah. uh, issues in Papua New Guinea in 1998. Yeah. I was on the other end of that as a military guy, sending up some of our aid to uh, see what we could do to help. Oh, you did a great job. But what about Octeti? You, that's the porphyry mine. You were uh, there in that uh, tremendously important time in Papua New Guinea when they were seeking to exploit that in a uh, responsible but productive yeah. way. Yeah. So well done. You've helped that uh, neighbour of ours immensely. We're proud of you. Thanks very much. <laughs> Appointed an officer in a general division, Mr. Brian Lochner, for distinguished service to parliament and politics through contributions to public policy and as federal director of the Liberal Party of Australia. Mr. Lochnain has had a long and distinguished career that has traversed both the public and private sector. He has worked tirelessly to deliver good public policy and has been a conduit on key policy making considerations with Australia's leaders in the resources and energy sector. He has also worked to strengthen ties between the Liberal Party and the business community, always acting with the highest integrity. Mr Lochnane has been a strong political ambassador for Australia, and today his nation acknowledges him. Mr Brian Lochnane, appointed an officer of the order. Morning, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. 13 years director of the Liberal Party, that's a long time. <laughs> life sentence. Yeah, life sentence. Well, you said that. But, <laughs> but you were Chief of Staff to a Minister for Defence and then to Minister for uh, Science and Industry and Tourism and, uh, and then to a Leader of the Opposition. But I think one of the things that uh, perhaps is, that leaps out of your biographical note was that you brokered a magnificent and enduring relationship between the Prime Minister of Canada, Prime Minister of Australia, and that accomplishment uh, of itself in building uh, a very strong bridge between those two nations stands you in great credit in this nation. Well done. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Appointed an officer in the General Division, Emeritus Professor Ingrid Moses, for distinguished service to higher education through senior academic management positions in Australian universities and for a range of community and church organisations. Professor Moses has made an outstanding contribution to Australian life through her achievements in tertiary education over many years. She continues her commitments to an ever-increasing number of community organisations that support financially and socially disadvantaged groups, particularly young people who would otherwise be disengaged from education. Professor Moses has a passionate regard for others less fortunate than herself and an abiding determination to make this world a better place for all. Emeritus Professor Ingrid Moses appointed an officer of the order. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations. Thank you. you were president of the uh, International Association of <coughs> University Presidents for a number of years. Yes. And your career with the University of Canberra, I mean, you were a pro vice chancellor and then you were the deputy vice chancellor and later on a burst as chancellor. And then you've done the same sort of role at the University of New England? At New England, I was Vice-Chancellor. Vice-Chancellor, OK. Well, uh, there's all of that which shows that you're one of those wonderful uh, and very storied um, administrators of uh, tertiary education, but in particular, what le you've been the local chair and very active in Anglicare in this part of uh, the state, haven't you? Yes. Well done. Congratulations. Appointed an officer in the military division, Vice Admiral David Johnston, 
for distinguished service to the Australian Defence Force in senior command and staff appointments. Admiral Johnston's leadership, professionalism and strategic vision have directly contributed to the success of deployed joint forces across a diverse range of operations. As Chief of Joint Operations, he was responsible for the command of all Australian Defence Force operations, both domestic and overseas, involving some 3,500 personnel deployed on operations from Antarctica to the Middle East. Admiral Johnston's service to our nation represents the finest traditions of the Australian Defence Force. Vice Admiral David Johnston, appointed an Officer of the Order. Morning, David. Yeah. You joined the Navy in 1978. Yeah, you, look, you don't look that old, actually. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you're, a, you're a warfare officer. You've commanded uh, a couple of ships, uh, Newcastle and what was the other one? Yeah, Adelaide. Adelaide, of course, great ships. Uh, you were Comflot, uh, commander of flotillas, which is a, sort of a very pivotal job to ass uh, assure the Chief of Navy and the Fleet Commander of the readiness and the capability of the, all the uh, fleet units. And you became uh, the Chief of Joint Operations in May 2014. And I know from your boss, the CDF, that uh, you were a great confidence inducer in him and, and the political leadership because of your uh, professionalism, your calm and uh, your clarity. And you've rightly been awarded this award and we're looking forward to your role as the Vice Chief of the Defence Force. Congratulations. Yeah, excellent. Appointed a member in the General Division, Mr Robin Eckerman. For significant service to the telecommunications industry through roles in broadband infrastructure and network development and to the energy supply sector. Since the early 1990s, Mr Eckerman has dedicated his professional life to advancing the Australian telecommunications industry. He has promoted the potential of broadband technology to address some of the most pressing social and environmental concerns of this era. As a trusted advisor to government and an industry leader, Mr Eckerman has made a profound contribution to our nation. Mr Robin Eckerman appointed a member of the order. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, this first, we'll put this on. That way we've got something to shake hands about. <laughs> Well, you've been, you were in charge of the rollout of uh, the NBN, if you like, the broadband uh, network. Predecessor. In, in, yeah, yeah. Predecessor. <laughs> Here he is. Uh, uh, <laughs> Marvellously successful and a wonderful tribute to your professionalism. But you've also been a mentor to a lot of young people who are entrepreneurial or starting a career. And you've got some wonderful successes. We won't ask you to name them, but this is one of your passions is to lead younger people into a productive uh, commercial career. And the last thing I wanted to mention was that you're also a, a bird photographer. <laughs> Within 2K of your home, you photographed and displayed on the internet, for the internet database, 105 different species. It's now 109. Oh. <laughs> Four in the last couple of days. <laughs> you, you are a polymath, well done, and we're very, very happy much. that you're here today. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Appointed a member in the General Division, Dr Alan Morrison, for this significant service to the community through development and support for international standards to the energy supply sector and to engineering. Dr Morrison is an engineer by training with a career spanning the communications industry, water and electricity supply industries and most notably in developing Australian and international standards. Dr Morrison has made a tangible difference to the lives of us all and has increased the influence and respect with which our nation is held in the international community. Dr Alan Morrison appointed a member of the order. Good morning. Good morning. 
Thank you very much. Congratulations. Not only were you, if you like, the, the leader in Australia of the, the standards uh, uh, matter, you rejuvenated the international cooperation in this regard, which would be seen by so many people in commerce, in science, uh, in academia more generally, uh, in so many fields of endeavour as absolutely crucial. That can be a wonderful legacy of your time uh, as an engineer, but as a person focusing on standards. It's a wonderful accomplishment and we, we congratulate you most warmly on it. Thank you for your kind words, your excellence. All the best. Appointed a member in the NETA for significant service to medicine sexual health professional is an extraordinary individual have been subjected to assault and those Dr Parrock's contribution to the people of the Australian Capital Territory is truly worthy of our recognition. Dr. Vanita Parekh, appointed. Good morning. Uh, it goes without saying you're a uh, member and a fellow of the Royal College of Pathologists, but I think on the Faculty of Forensic Science in there. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> But in particular, uh, what doesn't shine through starkly enough is the importance of the service you offer through that clinic of, you have a 24 hour clinic available for victims of sexual assault, where you will uh, f first of all deal with them very, very compassionately, but secondly, uh, the science must be right for uh, that uh, redress for what's happened to them. And I think if we look at you, we see somebody who, in this grim but vital area, is performing the work of an angel. Well done. A point General Division, Tyndale Bisco, for significant service to science productive biology and ecology as a researcher and mentor and to professional societies. Dr Tyndale Bisco is known as the grandfather of Australian marsupial biology and ecology. The breadth and depth of his research has been outstanding and even today, after almost 50 years, he continues to be a leader in this field. In addition to his contributions to science over many decades, Dr Tyndale Bisco has been a generous member and mentor to generations of young scientists and a strong advocate for humanitarian causes. Dr Hugh Tyndale Bisco, appointed member of the order. Good morning. CSIRO for a very long time, 1970 to 95, something like that, yeah. Even longer. Even longer, <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, and uh, all of that time in your speciality, just growing this global, or this national and global reputation. You've been awarded, I think, five different awards at, uh, all within your field. Yes. Uh, but you've also been a long-term member of the Academy, Australian Academy of of yeah, science. That's true. Yeah. Yes. Well, we're very proud of you, and it's a it's a great opportunity today to acknowledge a, a lifetime of devotion to the fauna of Australia. Well done. Thank you very much. Appointed a member in the military division, Captain Raymond Leggett for exceptional service to the Royal Australian Navy across the fields of capability management, training, command and operations. 
Captain Leggett is an officer of rare ability. He's provided exceptional service across diverse defence disciplines. He's excelled in command and operations and worked across defence to position Navy to both meet and advance future requirements. Captain Leggett is recognised across the Australian Defence Force for his performance. Captain Raymond Leggett appointed a member of the Order. Good morning. <laughs> That's the peanut gallery there, don't That's worry about um, You joined the Navy 80, 83. 83, yes, and uh, you've commanded that uh, 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 warship and the shore establishment Watson. What was your ship? The Canberra. Man? The Canberra, fantastic ship. And of course, now there's a new Canberra in the water. A little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. <laughs> you are one of the champions of our emerging amphibious uh, capability with those great ships and others. Uh, and you, you've been a, a, a champion of that and largely to do with the successful fielding of that capability. Hugely important for an island nation like Australia. Congratulations. Thank you, Alan. Appointed a member in the military division, Brigadier Mark, for exceptional service as the Director General Training Forces Command and Commandant of the Royal Military College of Australia. Brigadier Brewer has demonstrated dedicated commitment and leadership in his various roles. As the Director General Training Forces Command, he delivered professional, capability based training solutions. As Commandant of the Royal Military College of Australia, Brigadier Brewer achieved organisational transformation, encouraged diversity and enhanced the strategic reputation of the Australian Defence Force. Brigadier Mark Brewer appointed a member of the order. Good morning, Your Excellency. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Very well, thanks. Congratulations. Uh, this is when the Commandant start looking young. Uh, you graduated in 1987 from uh, Duntroon and you got your uh, conspicuous service cross for your work with the ASLAV, uh, that's an armoured vehicle, and the uh, new um, um, armed helicopter, uh, the Tiger. Yep. And then you got a bar to that when you were Chief of Staff of the uh, Overseas Deployment. What was that? The 69? Task Force 69? In uh, Padang. Okay. In Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Well done there. And of course, now you've had a wonderful tour of duty as Commandant of the Royal Military College where those young men and women who populate the Army's leadership ranks uh, have to have their grounding. You've done a magnificent job. Well done. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Associate Professor Christopher Ashton for service to medicine and to medical education. Dr Ashton has had a distinguished career as a physician, particularly in the field of gastroenterology. His service to medical teaching, training and development, particularly to rural medicine for over 40 years is significant and for that we honour him today. Associate Professor Christopher Ashton awarded the Medal of the Order. Hello, how are you hello. going? Hello. Peter French says hello. Thank you. There you go. Now, you established the acute medical care service at uh, Calvary Hospital, which was opened quite recently, but you stayed with that project and it's a wonderful addition to health services in the ACT. So uh, that's sort of been a labour of love and, 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 and uh, quite a task. Also, you've been visiting uh, Cooma Hospital off and on to do endoscopy uh, work there for many years. And the final thing which absolutely confers on you medical sainthood is that you've been uh, mentoring a lot of rural doctors in the area through your outreach. You're a real great member of our community. Well done. Thank you very much. Awarded 
of the medal in the general division, Dr. David Coles, for service to medicine and to rowing. Dr. Coles is a pioneer in the field of cardiology in the Canberra region, particularly through the establishment of coronary care services at the Canberra Hospital. Over the past 40 years, he's mentored medical professionals as well as improving the quality of life for many. Dr. Coles has also made a significant contribution to the sport of rowing in Australia. Dr. David Coles awarded the Medal of the Order. Good morning. Good morning. We well last, last met um, after the bushfire and Peter French is the... Well, that would be right, though. Know. May I never need your services. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you established this uh, cardiography unit at the Canberra Hospital, which was... Uh, Woden uh, Valley Hospital. Yeah, uh, Woden Valley as well. Yeah, Woden Valley Hospital. Um, but also, I think um, you have this wonderful, uh, in your CV, a wonderful reference to you making repeated visits to Nepal mm. to help uh, with cardiac services there. Do you say it angiography or angiography? Angiography. Angiography, there you go. I got it pretty close. Yeah. And that's the particular thing that you were uh, contributing in your trips to Nepal over and over again. How many times did you go? Five. Five times. Mm -hmm. uh, were you there in any relationship with the earthquake or just ordinary? No, 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 it was a, separate. Uh, an outreach. And finally, you've been the doc for so many rowing uh, uh, mm -hmm. championships, both here and overseas. Mm -hmm. So uh, we thank you for that, all those gold medals and silver medals and bronze medals, and those magnificent men and women. Thank you. Well done. Thanks. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr William Hankey, for service to community health and to conservation. Mr Hankey has dedicated himself to a range of health and conservation programs over many years. He's been tenacious in the fight against invasive avian species in the ACT and has contributed greatly to Canberra's Arboretum. Mr Hankey has, importantly, also led campaigns to raise awareness of the importance of organ donation and renal health. Mr William Hankey awarded the Medal of the Order. Good morning. You've actually been a board member of uh, Gift of Life here in Canberra for quite some time. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. And ACT Kidney Health, uh, there's... Uh, yep, what, yes, what? and the national bodies as well. Okay. And then there's this other thing that you do, which is you've got a, a real set on minor birds, and I think there's a few friends of, yep. uh, of that here. And, uh, and, and we've got a trap for you for your front yard. Thank so. you. Right. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll get our minor bird straight onto it. <laughs> um, but you, well, tell me, you've got the men of McConaughey, you've got the, the inmates at the Alexander McConaughey Centre who are uh, constructing traps that you use around the ACT. Well, they have been, and also now we have the people doing community service orders. Yes. Uh, they do them as well, so yeah. that's our source of, uh, of traps. And you put them out around the place uh, and they work pretty well? Uh, well, we've taken Indian minor birds from the third most common bird in Canberra now down to the 18th. Over, over 11 years, so uh, 65,000 have been taken out. So. Minor birds, be aware. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr John Keeley, for service to the community of the Australian Capital Territory. Mr Keeley has an enviable track record in working for members of his local community in South Canberra. He's played an important role as a linchpin for residents' concerns and his efforts in planning, consultation and conservation matters is highly regarded. By Mr Keeley's example, he's encouraged others to get involved and to give back to society. Mr John Keeley awarded the Medal of the Order. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Well, they're cheering in Narrabunda and probably other places right now. You're Mr Narrabunda because you, you started this whole Narrabunda group that has uh, been a bit of a ginger group to uh, make sure government is aware that there are things that should be done to keep uh, uh, useful um, community uh, utilities in Narrabunda. I think tennis courts and all that sort of thing. You, you, you're the fella. Uh, you've got the energy. You organise everybody. And this is the sort of stuff of communities. You still drive a volunteer, as a volunteer, do a bus service, don't you? I, I've sort of moved now into inside and uh, well, coordinate services now. What, did they vote so you out of that? I'm, I'm, but, I'm back on the pay. Yeah, well, for years and years you were doing that, and that just underscores what a community asset you are. Thank Keep you, it up. Much. Well done. Thank you. Awarded the medal in the general division, Mr Domenico Miko, for service to the arts in the Australian Capital Territory. Mr Miko has played a considerable role in the cultural development of the Australian Capital Territory. His insight into the benefits of community arts to the local population has been of great value, as has his advice on multiculturalism and the arts in general. Through his leadership positions, Mr Miko has been a major and creative driver of cultural activities in our city. Mr Domenico Miko awarded the Medal of the Order. Good morning. Good morning. There you go. Right. You. Face this way. Well, the Canberra Times, an august uh, journal of record, has named you as one of the 75 people who've shaped the ACT. There you are, in front of us, right here. You're also in, uh, you were, as an artistic director, I think, involved in the Canberra Festival. Multicultural Festival. Multicultural Festival. And, the Cam and what's the other one, the Canberra? So it used to be the Canberra Festival. Yeah. Has it morphed into yeah, something? It's Sort of change a little bit. Okay, but you were in at the ground floor yep. on on both of those projects, and uh, you're renowned through the ACT uh, today. The ACT, I'll just put that out a bit there. The ACT is celebrating on your behalf. Uh, the Republic of Italy also awarded you a, a medal at some earlier time, did they yes, not? Yes, they did. Okay, yeah. well, they showed good judgment. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> Awarded the medal in the general division, Mr John Mitchell, for service to the community as a philanthropist. Mr Mitchell has been a long-term benefactor and supporter of a range of higher education, health and youth organisations. He is passionate about facilitating educational opportunities and by doing so, assisting students to realise their potential. Mr Mitchell is a generous Australian who is strongly motivated to improve the lives of others. Mr John Mitchell awarded the Medal of the Order. Good morning. Good morning, Your Excellency. Congratulations. It's uh, always wonderful when you see somebody who, have, through their own hard work, have created a, an amount of wealth which they then uh, instinctively apply to the betterment of others. I think you've endowed a, a fellowship, which is a postdoctoral uh, research fellowship at the School of Economics here in Canberra. That's right. And also you've endowed a chair uh, there. Uh, there's a scholarship at the Australian Catholic University in the field of nursing. Uh, you have uh, been such a positive influence on the upliftment of learning and research here in the ACT. Uh, this is a most, most worthy award. Congratulations. Thanks, Your Excellency. Yeah. For service to veterans and their families, Mr Porga's voluntary endeavours have transformed into achievements that benefited the lives of veterans and their dependents. He's an advocate for justice, fairness and protecting the rights and entitlements of our veterans, war widows and defence force personnel. Mr Paul Gar's achievements for others are most, most noteworthy. 
for us today. Mr. Jan Volker awarded the Medal of the Order. Good morning, Anne. Your Excellency. And I think that's a life membership. Meritorious membership. Okay, well, it's obviously been meritorious. <laughs> gee. Uh, you were in the Air Force for, uh, from 57 to 84, is that, is that right? Yeah, about 84, yeah. Yeah, okay. And you've been, for the last 20 years, the, the person within the Return Services League here in the ACT that organises and runs that dawn service, is correct? That's right. Yeah. 26. Yeah. Well, I want to particularly compliment you in, I thought it was a brilliant stroke in 2014 when we had the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and you arranged kookaburras at That's the dawn right. service. <laughs> Not easy to do. I, I know, but the <laughs> credit where it's due. <laughs> You would be uplifted to see the number of Canberrans and visitors to Canberra who assemble in the gloom of pre-dawn yeah. to attend that service. Uh, it is the most dignified and, uh, and appropriate service. You take a great deal of credit for that. Well done. In the general division, Ms. Diane Thompson, for service to conservation. And Ms. Thompson has given over 30 years of service to the conservation, protection, and rehabilitation of our environment and natural areas. She's done this as an advocate and community representative and through unwavering volunteer efforts. Ms. Thompson's energy and passion are to be admired and are an example to us all. Ms. Diane Thompson, awarded the medal of the order. Hello, how are you today? Well done. So you've got a particular expertise in Kosciuszko National Park and in, I think uh, you, you've, you've become an advisor and a consultant uh, on the management of uh, certain parts of the National Park Conservation, mm -hmm. Wild Horses. Yes, in that, yeah. Wild Horses. And I think after you wrote a self-published a book on the recovery of Namadji and Kosciuszko National Park after the 2003 bushfires locally, yes. uh, that were ring of fire. I think uh, photographs and and some text. Well, you are a sort of uh, one of those community members whose uh, total devotion to our environment uh, makes us a lucky country. Well done. Thank you. the lives of new Australians. She's provided a clear and articulate voice for the issues affecting migrants. Ms. Wilshire's efforts have enabled her to maintain multi-sector partnerships and she constantly seeks new ways to build a shared vision of multicultural Australia. Ms. Carla Wilshire awarded the Medal of the Order. Hello, how are you? Thank you. Good, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, you've been the chief executive for a number of years now, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. And you established the uh, Migrant and Settlement Awards, did you? Yeah. I did. And do they go to people who are of great assistance yeah. in incorporating migrants into our society? My favourite award is the Caseworker of the Year. Fantastic. People who spend all day, every day helping yeah. migrants. Uh, what's the other initiative you've established about uh, a Friendly Australia or? Friendly Nation initiative. Friendly Nation, yep. yep. That's for businesses that do their best to incorporate new migrants into uh, That's correct. ventures. Well, we're glad you're hard at it because uh, if you look around our nation, we're a nation of first Australians and migrants. And uh, that's happening every day and we're glad you're on the job. Thank you very much. Well done. Awarded an honorary medal in the general division for service to the art of woodwork and to the community of Bungendore. 
Mr McLaren has had a significant influence on the development of Australian craft-based woodwork. He's well known not only as a designer and maker, but for his professionalism in working with other artists to exhi exhibit their craft. Mr McLaren, through his nationally renowned Woodworks Gallery, has made a major contribution to the cultural and business community of Bungendore. Mr David McLaren awarded an honorary medal of the order. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Again. So you were the founder of the gallery, weren't you? That's correct. Yeah. And uh, you get 120,000 visitors a year into Bungendore into your gallery. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Some people didn't probably know that one. And uh, you've received two national awards and well, any number, 15 or something, regional awards yes, right. as a tourism uh, uh, venue. Yes. Uh, and I think you're also active in the Bungendore Chamber of Commerce. You're the vice, vice president? Yes. OK. President, you should be. <laughs> Look, uh, you're an icon there. You're a, a, not only a craftsperson, but a, a, a great uh, adornment to that particular uh, uh, craft because it's the most famous gallery of its nature in, in Australia. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Awarded the medal in the military division Commander Robert Carline for meritorious service in the field of electronic warfare. Commander Carline has provided meritorious service through leadership and constructive relationship management in complex and demanding roles. His commitment and mentoring has provided significant improvement to the quality of electronic warfare operator training. Commander Carline's contributions have raised the standards of operational support in the Australian Navy. Commander Robert Carline awarded the Medal of the Order. Hi, Robert. Congratulations. Thanks. 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 Joined the Navy in 75, yes. uh, Warren Officer in 99, commissioned 03 or something 2003. like that. 2003. Yeah. 2003. And, and no wonder in that lengthy service, I think you've served in 15 Her Majesty's Australian ships. I counted them up. <laughs> you have. Yes. <laughs> well, just agree with me. Anyway. <laughs> uh, and uh, you're a communicator, and now you're in charge of a particularly important um, electronic warfare outfit, and you are a great boss for them, and exactly the right level of experience and maturity to have him command of the, that diverse group. Well done. Yeah. Awarded the medal in the military division, Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Hiscock, for meritorious service to the musical and professional development of Australian Army bands. Colonel Hiscock displayed outstanding leadership and professional commitment as the officer commanding and music director of the band of the 1st Battalion of the Royal Australian Regiment and the band of the Royal Military College. Colonel Hiscock has also made a significant contribution to the management and development of bands as the executive officer of the Australian Army Band. Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Hiscock awarded the Medal of the Order. Good morning, how are you? Thanks, yeah. Oh, you've been around a while too, haven't you? Now, uh, you, uh, you were the CEO of the School of Music in 2017, is that right? I'm there now. Yeah, okay. Are they behaving themselves? Pretty good. Yeah. They're very busy, aren't they, your, your young men and women? Um, you took a band overseas into the Middle East area of operations. The 1RAR band? Yes, sir. First time a band had gone as not part of a concert, but in its own right. Yes. Um, I'll bet you the men and women lapped it up too. We loved it. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean the people who listen to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they like it. <laughs> so uh, you're a wonderful professional and uh, one of those millions of activities in the Defence Force 
which altogether create this wonderful corpus of the ADF. Well done. Thanks. Awarded a medal in the military division, Warrant Officer Class 1, Nathan Holdforth, for meritorious service as the Senior Trade Medical Standards Warrant Officer at the Army School of Health and the Senior Medical Technician Army at the Directorate of Army Health, Army Headquarters. Warrant Officer Holdforth has supported quality training and simulation, management of protocols and standards, and the progress of innovative solutions in health material to Army personnel. Warrant Officer Holdforth's capacity to manage multiple projects and priorities while maintaining a commitment to improving health services personnel in the conduct of their core roles has been exemplary. Warrant Officer Class 1, Nathan Holdforth, awarded the Medal of the Order. Good morning. How are you, sir? Very well. Cheers. You joined the Army in 91? Yes. Sir. Okay. And uh, promoted when? 2013 to 2013 one? 2013 to a one officer class. Board. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you're one of that legion of uh, the layer of professionals within the three services you know, as a warrant officer. Uh, you're there to ensure standards. I think you're, one of your particular outcomes has been the uh, modernisation and, and stipulating the capability for Army ambulances, bringing them into a new layer of capability, and also training standards amongst your youngsters who look up to you for your wisdom and expertise. Uh, you know, keep the torch burning. Well done. Thank you. Your Excellency, we turn to distinguished service decorations and awarded the Commendation for Distinguished Service, Colonel Matthew Cattell, for distinguished performance of duty as the Chief of Operations, Headquarters Combined Joint Force Land Component, Command Iraq, while deployed on Operation Okra from March to December 2016. Colonel Cattell provided exceptional leadership during a significant surge in operations, which saw Iraqi security forces advance to and commence the recapture of Mosul, Iraq's second largest city. Colonel Cattell's tactical insight and skill in enabling combat forces in a challenging operational environment enhanced situational understanding and directly contributed to the success of the mission. Colonel Matthew Cattell awarded the commendation for distinguished service. Good morning. Congratulations. And while all that was occurring, you had a changeover of the major uh, US formations here from 101st Airborne to the 1st Infantry Division. Yes, sir. Just, just throw that in. Yeah. And it's around this time, that the, as well as Mosul, the Iraqis were getting to grips with liberating uh, uh, Fallujah, uh, yes, Ramadi, uh, uh, Kibbe, uh, what's the what's the last one, K? Uh, Kalu, uh, it doesn't matter. Another to place. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, and you were you were enabling them. You were providing advice. You were setting up logistic plans, support plans, uh, and all of this enabled the Iraqis to do the fighting and win. That's a lifelong memory for you. Thank well you, done. Very Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Awarded the Commendation for Distinguished Service, Group Captain Terence Deeth, for distinguished performance of duty as Director Combined Joint Operations and Senior National Representatives Train, Advise, Assist Command, AIR, in Afghanistan on Operation High Road from March 2016 to March 2017. Group Captain Deeth overcame cultural, tactical and operational differences to deliver a fixed wing, close air support capability for the Afghan Air Force. His performance and leadership of the Australian contribution directly improved the combat capability and security of Afghanistan. Group Captain Deeth's efforts have significantly enhanced the reputation of the Australian Defence Force. 
Group Captain Terence Deeth awarded the commendation for distinguished service. Fundamentally, you took it from being a vestigial air force with uh, not much combat capability, and I think over five years it will double in its combat capacity to the point where it will then crea uh, create a potent adjunct to whatever the ground forces need to do. Uh, that is a fantastic uh, achievement, uh, and you can, again, like one of your predecessors just through here, you can look at that part and say, we helped. We've given them a chance. Well done. Sir. Conspicuous Service Decorations awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Commander Sean Bowers. For outstanding achievement in enhancing the capability and management of Navy Explosive Ordnance. Commander Bowers executed his duties as Deputy Director of Navy Logistics Support, Explosive Ordnance with Outstanding Professionals. skills have enabled him to engage with stakeholders to significantly improve Navy's explosive ordnance processes and procedures, having lasting improvements to Navy capability. Commander Sean Bowers awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Good morning. Good morning uh, you joined the Navy in 1989? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, people here, maybe the front row to a great degree, but not further back, I don't understand that in that $30 billion or more that is the annual budget for defence, there's a huge amount of it goes on to ordnance. So ordnance is of itself a hugely vital part of the expenditure to get it right. And the management of it, particularly naval ordnance, is a very complex and important activity. So let it not be said that this is a backroom activity. This is a front of mind activity for people like uh, the Chief of the Defence Force and the Minister for Defence. So your role in that has been hugely important for your service and for the ADF. Well done. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Awarded the Captain Philip Henry for outstanding achievement as the commanding officer HMAS Darwin on Operation Manitou during 2016. Captain Henry's outstanding command and leadership of HMAS Darwin has greatly enhanced Australia's efforts in combating international terrorism. Captain Henry's support of coalition maritime force operations included the seizure of a substantial amount of illicit narcotics and illegal weapons which directly reduce the availability of funds and arms to terrorist groups. Captain Philip Henry awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Morning. So your ship was on task for 135 days on Manitou? Yes, sir and you seized just under uh, 1,000 kilograms of narcotics, street value $750 million, and then a, in a separate incident, a little series of incidents, you got uh, just over 2,000 weapons, machine guns, mortars, rocket launchers, small arms. Um, so your ship had an extraordinary effect on uh, the lawful operation in those waters. So that was tremendous. You were also working in a coalition maritime force of, I think, 31 nations involved and achieved what we always hope for, uh, this wonderful admiration from partners who say the Australians know what they're doing. Well, your ship certainly did. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Captain David Mann, for outstanding devotion to duty 
as Director Navy Capability Needs and Analysis, Navy Strategic Command, in support of force design and development. Captain Mann has applied exceptional judgment, analysis and dedication in developing a broad range of comprehensive material to inform senior level decision making for strategically important Navy capabilities. Captain Mann's devotion to duty accords with the highest standards of service in the Royal Australian Navy and is truly worthy of our recognition. Captain David Mann awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Morning, David. Joined the Navy in 89? Yes, sir. And you were CEO of Darwin how long ago? Oh, eight, seven years ago now, sir. And you've been doing this job that you were presently uh, in for a while? Yeah. Uh, just about to start a new job, sir, so yeah. I was lucky enough to spend the last two years in Hawaii and then... Um, oh, Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the replenishment ship offshore patrol vessels, uh, there's a very uh, impressive list of capabilities that uh, have to be... Uh, explained and argued for uh, within the department, within the Defence Force, within wider government. And you've been successful in fielding those uh, bids and approvals have been gained and therefore Navy can look to you as not only for your success in that but for the future as a, uh, a wonderful proponent of proper capability. Well done. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Colonel Brett Mosley, for outstanding achievement as the deputy and team leader of the Life Cycle Project Team. Colonel Mosley's ability to extract first class results from his team while under sustained pressure from a demanding group of defence and other government stakeholders has been exceptional. Colonel Mosley's achievements leading the capability life cycle project are of the highest order and in keeping with the finest traditions of the Australian Army and the Australian Defence Force. Colonel Brett Mosley awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Join the Army in 91? Yes, sir. Operational service in East Timor, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Two tours of Af Afghanistan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What did I miss? Uh, that was it, sir. Oh, all yeah. right, thank you. <laughs> uh, and now you're on the capability life cycle. The potential of getting an understanding of this and a methodology is to save billions of dollars of through life costs and replacement strategies. So it's, a, it's an evolution of the highest importance, uh, great cost. And if you're involved in that and doing well, well, three cheers for you. Thanks. Well yeah. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal, Petty Officer Paul Berry. For meritorious devotion to duty as a senior imagery specialist within the Australian Defence Force Joint Public Affairs Unit. Petty Officer Berry has made a substantial contribution to improving the public's awareness of the work of our nation's Defence Force. His exceptional imagery of operations, exercises and high-profile defence activities has strengthened government's messaging at home and abroad and are an enduring legacy of Australia's military history. Petty Officer Paul Berry awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal. Good morning. Mm. Yeah. Now yeah, we're good. Now you joined the Navy in '99. Went to the HMAS Sydney. You know, your first sea deployment. Is that right? That's right. Sir. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, you were in the Fed Guard for a while. I was. Yeah. And then. Uh, you have gone into this area of uh, imagery, photography, basically, and on RIMPAC, 
that's the big Navy exercise over in Hawaii, uh, Hawaiian waters. Uh, your images were the images of choice, not just for the Royal Australian Navy, but for the US Navy. They wanted your stuff. So you've got a real, you're a damn hand at this. And just at the moment, you're actually leading a team in the uh, Joint Public Affairs Unit, is that right? That's Normally an officer's billet. Yes. But you're the best man for the job. We think so too. Well done. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal, Lieutenant Commander Susan Harris, for meritorious devotion to duty in the field of submarine workforce management. Commander Harris has demonstrated worthy service as both a submariner and as a workforce specialist. She led the development and implementation of strategic initiatives for the growth and sustainment of our submarine workforce. Commander Harris's initiatives will help Navy to deliver a submarine force capable of meeting its objectives for decades to come. Lieutenant Commander Susan Harris awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal. Good morning. Congratulations. Um, you're a seaman officer? Yes, sir. And uh, you were the first executive officer of Her Majesty's Australian Submarines. Is that right? I am, sir. Yeah, yeah that's fantastic. That was just last year. Uh, I still am, sir. You still am? Yes. Right. How's it going? Excellent. Excellent. But you're also a workforce planner for how we get people to be attracted to and retained within the submarine workforce. That's great. So, and I think you have had to come up with some pretty uh, new strategies to make sure we've got the very best men and women mm. into the submarine service who are, uh, have the aptitude for that sort of service. Yes, sir. Okay, well, you're doing a fantastic job. Good luck as your as executive officer there. You've only had your rank on a short time, haven't you? Uh, no, 19, uh, 2006, sir. Eh? Really? Yes. Oh, all right. Maybe, maybe need some more. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal, Lieutenant Commander Sandon Morrill, for meritorious devotion to duty in the field of operational planning and implementation in direct support of Australian Defence Force operations. <coughs> Camden Morrill's, Commander Morrill's achievements have enabled Headquarters Joint Operations Command to effectively utilise separate niche capabilities in support of Australian Defence Force and coalition operations. Commander Morrill's diligence and acumen have delivered significant outcomes and have laid the foundation for the effective use of these capabilities in support of current and future operations. Lieutenant Commander Sandin Morrill awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal. Good morning. Join the Navy in 98, and I think I've seen you were a navigator or in the navigation area on six ships. Right, yes. Yeah, and now you're uh, in a different niche employment, but still uh, uh, making a huge contribution, particularly in this uh, really uh, very complicated area of conflict of counterterrorism. And uh, in that regard, uh, all that maturity that you've gained and shown in the past is uh, very important now, and we're using, uh, to the greatest extent possible, that which is between your temples. Well done. Your Excellency, we turn to Meritorious Service Awards and awarded the Public Service Medal, Mr Mark Ablong, for outstanding public service through the advancement of Australia's defence capability. Mr Ablong has been central to the development of the Department of Defence's strategic policy since the mid-2000s. His achievements have provided the building blocks for defence strategy, force structure development and engagement with industry for the next decade and beyond. 
Mr Ablong's endeavours have been of the highest order. Mr Martin awarded the Public Service Medal. Hello, how are you going? Good to see you again. You can't stay away from white papers, can you? No, no. You were the chief of staff to the uh, um, white paper in 2009. Yep, yeah, yep. 09, and then uh, you're now a first assistant secretary still, yes. and you are uh, empowering, if you like, the 2014 through to 2016 white paper. I think uh, you were advising the principal author of that uh, of that paper. The, these. Uh, major statements of policy and direction uh, have years of preparation and then a number of years of effect and we need people with uh, deep maturity and experience which we've got in you Mark well done thank you congratulations thank you. awarded the public service medal mr ian jameson for outstanding public service in the policy, program and delivery of Commonwealth Aged Care. Mr Jamison has successfully led and delivered key government reforms, including the My Aged Care Policy initiative and the enhancement of the aged care funding instrument. His managed teams are required to work to compress timeframes in order to achieve legislative requirements. Mr Jamison has provided uncompromising service to our nation through the delivery of exceptional aged care programs. Mr Ian Jamison awarded the Public Service Medal. Hello, man. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. In particular, you were in the, when you were in the Department of Human Services, you led that project to uh, look at um, increased use of home care, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And I think as a result of that, there's this sort of tectonic shift from traditional aged care uh, vectors into much more opportunity for elderly couples to uh, stay in, in their own home and to access services in the home. And you've even, I think, revolutionised how you market this to people uh, so the department doesn't just push out a policy and say good luck with that. You're actually selling it. And that's a wonderful thing. And uh, as we're all getting older, we all want to have all those sorts of options. And you've brought that compassionate and realistic um, policy to, to life. Well done. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Awarded the Public Service Medal Mr. Brendan McRandall for outstanding public service in the development and delivery of the Western Sydney Airport project to the construction stage. Mr. McRandall's project planning and design skills have paved the way for the early stages of a second Sydney airport. Through engagement and negotiations with government, industry and local representatives, he's helped secure support at all levels and advance the construction planning phase. Mr McRandall's commitment to this vital element of Sydney's transport infrastructure is to be commended. Mr Brendan McRandall awarded the Public Service Medal. How are you? Very well, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Didn't you come in through defence in 91? Uh, 90, well, I, uh, 96 in the Defence Department. Yeah. And I uh, oh. worked on uh, part of the Interfet deployment. Then you got involved with Badgery, well, did a lot of other things, but then Badgery's Creek. That's right. Are you the executive director from the Commonwealth point of view, were you? That's in, right, yes, yeah. yes. And then you moved along from that to be executive director of all the federal interest in uh, airports, is that right? That's correct. 20 yes. something? 22. Air, 22 yes. airports around the. Right? And on top of that, you're a uh, commercial pilot who, uh, with a rotary wing and a fixed wing license. Yes. <laughs> who, who else to have? <laughs> Thank you very much. Well done. Thanks very much for your work. Awarded the Public Service Medal, 
Ms Susan Weston for outstanding public service in advancing the national innovation and science agenda. Ms Weston has led the development of key government policy initiatives across the areas of science innovation, taxation, small business and industry. She's held in the highest regard by stakeholders at all levels of government, the private sector and the research community. Ms Weston's record of delivering significant outcomes in the national interest is most worthy of our recognition. Ms Susan Weston awarded the Public Service Medal. Hello, Susan. Now, you're a Deputy Secretary in your department, yeah, and uh, I understand that one of the big ticket things that uh, you've had to uh, uh, negotiate is a partnership with the European Southern, Southern Observatory for Optical Astronomy. Astronomy. Very good, yeah, and, and, and that's worked well, and so to our benefit? To our benefit, we are in the last stages of implementing. It's yep. um, allowed uh, Optical Astronomy in Australia to access eight metre telescopes, something the community is really keen for. So, right. a great opportunity. Well, that's wonderful, and thank you for that. And the other thing I notice is, is within your department, you're the disability champion. I am. Fantastic, so well done. All the best. Awarded the Australian Police Medal, Commander Susan Thomas, for distinguished service to the Australian Federal Police, particularly in the areas of national operations and international policing. Commander Thomas has served with distinction for over 35 years with the Australian Federal Police. In particular, she is recognised for her achievements in the areas of drug investigation, intelligence and counter-terrorism. Additionally, she has represented Australia in several international liaison roles where she has strengthened our law enforcement interagency relations. We are indebted to Commander Thomas for her professionalism and her service. Commander Susan Thomas awarded the Australian Police Medal. How are you? Hello, very well, thank you, sir. Good. Have a go. Thank you, Colin. Joined the police in '83. I did. Yep. Uh, and when the world changed in the early 2000s, and we started to really need to open up and and uh, explore and discover the intelligence behind uh, bad actors, mm -hmm. you were right in the thick of that. Yes. And uh, that's followed you through and yes. you had a posting in Hong Kong. I did. Good fun? Six months? Fantastic. Yeah. And also recently a posting in Beijing. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Canberra must seem a bit strange after that. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. You are a thorough professional. Thank well done. Thank you very much, yeah. sir. Awarded the Australian Fire Service Medal, Mr Mark Hoskinson for distinguished service to New South Wales Rural Fire Service. Mr Hoskinson has been a stalwart of his local rural fire brigade in the central west of New South Wales since 1979. He's demonstrated his leadership capabilities by serving in a range of positions and is highly respected by his colleagues, peers and the area's volunteers. Mr Hoskinson is passionate about continuous improvement and training and his commitment to his local community is most noteworthy. Mr Mark Hoskinson awarded the Australian Fire Service Medal. Hi Mark, good to see you. Well done. Kaikoura Brigade was where you joined up, was it? Okay, 79? Yes, yes, sir. And you're now group captain of uh, Bland Tamora uh, yes, Region West. You've been to five major events and probably countless others. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, you normally sit somewhere up the front here as the national president of the Bravery Institute. So perhaps a little later on, when you've gathered your own thoughts uh, in back there, you'll be interested in some more we have to say up the front mm -hmm. with others. Uh, you are, of course, part of the lifeblood of the community. You give yourself over to keeping them safe, and we thank you for it. Thanks, sir. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
awarded the Australian Fire Service Medal, Mr David Loft, for distinguished service to the New South Wales Rural Fire Service. Mr Loft has been a volunteer with the New South Wales Rural Fire Service for over 22 years. During this time, he's attended numerous fires in the Queanbeyan Palarang area and has led teams locally across New South Wales and also interstate. He's provided leadership to local brigades through training roles and administration of volunteers. Mr Loft has served his community with both distinction and dedication, and we thank him for his service. Mr David Loft awarded the Australian Fire Service Medal. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations. Now, you're truly a local. You joined Womboy in Yarralumla uh, 96. That's correct. And uh, now you're group captain and since 2011. Yes, that's right. OK. Mm. Now, you're also a wildfire investigator, so you're the per one of the persons who might go to a, where a, a fire has erupted. Sites? Oh, yes, yeah. At the state. Okay. So um, we might be anywhere, sent anywhere to investigate fires. Okay. Yeah. Well, that just increases our admiration for the time you're able to devote to something which is so obviously of uh, life and death uh, um, importance to the community. And your mentor, lots of youngsters in amongst that too, we note that. Well, yes, that's... and thank you for coming out to uh, Kawula last year too. We really appreciated that. My pleasure. Good. Thank you. Cheers. Awarded the Australian Fire Service Medal, Mr Paul Reardon, for distinguished service to the New South Wales Rural Fire Service. Mr Reardon has been an active member of the New South Wales Rural Fire Service since 1963, serving in a number of brigades. He has spent a lifetime dedicated to the protection of property and the community, and has always encouraged his volunteers and staff to develop their skills. Mr Reardon is a very fine example of volunteerism and today we extend to him much deserved recognition. Mr Paul Reardon awarded the Australian Fire Service Medal. Good morning. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. Now you joined Bangador, 63. 63, yeah. yes. And then obviously stayed in, became a group captain. You've been out of the area quite a few times to help other areas in need of uh, rural fire brigade services. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Blue Mountains? Blue Mountains. Anything yeah. further afield than that? The uh, fires down in the Snowy Mountains. Snowy Mountains, yeah. okay. And when one thinks of the fact that over all these years you've uh, been there to mentor and train and then to participate uh, in the efforts of your brigades and then the group. Um, and it's about time your community recognised you, your most worthy recipient of this. Thank you. Congratulations. Your Excellency, we now turn to bravery decorations and awarded the bravery medal is Mr Kevin Hughes. On the 4th of April, 1993, Mr Kevin Hughes cut a skydiver free who was caught in mid-air against a plane near Tugulawa in Queensland. Mr Hughes was flying parachuting sorties at the Tugulawa drop zone. After reaching the required altitude, four jumpers climbed outside the plane to position themselves for exit. When they began to exit, one of the skydivers caught her foot on the aircraft step and was left hanging upside down. Mr Hughes immediately left the plane's controls and moved to the open door. He climbed half a body length outside the fast moving aircraft and reached down and attempted to cut the jumpsuit free of the step. During several attempts, Mr Hughes returned to the cockpit to regain control of the aircraft before he managed to cut the woman free. The woman fell away from the plane, opened her parachute and landed safely. Fortunately, she sustained only minor injuries to her ankle from the incident. 
and today, for his actions, Mr Kevin Hughes is awarded the Bravery Medal. How are you going? Well. All right. Here we go. We're going to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a grip on him too. I... <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd like to see the face of a very brave man. That's an incredible feat. And the lady, I don't know what her first name is, but her nickname now is Lucky. <laughs> Please applaud this man as he returns to your movie. Awarded the Bravery Medal, Constable Zachary Rolfe. In the early afternoon of 27 December 2016, Constable Zachary Rolfe rescued tourists from floodwaters near Alice Springs. Constable Rolfe and other police officers went to a flooded river crossing 50 kilometres from Alice Springs where they found a man clinging onto a tree in the middle of fast flowing river. The man had escaped from a car that had been washed off the crossing. At this time they learnt that a second person from the car was still somewhere in the river. Without knowing the depth of the turbulent water, Constable Rolfe entered the river and made his way towards the stranded man. After reaching a small island, he remained there to monitor the stranded man whilst another officer went to get rescue equipment. When the equipment was brought to him, Constable Rolfe entered the water again and together with two other people threw a rope to the stranded man. Using themselves as anchors, they encouraged the man to let go of the tree as he was pushed by the current to safety before being taken to waiting paramedics. Concerned for the well-being of the second person, Constable Rolfe began searching along the riverbank. After five kilometres, he located a woman on the opposite riverbank. Despite his best attempts to have her move to a safer area so that she could cross, she wouldn't comply. He then re-entered the treacherous, fast-flowing river and made his way to her. Together they, hotted, they headed on foot to the crossing. However, as the woman couldn't swim and was very distressed, Constable Rolfe successfully carried her on his back through the dangerous water to the bank. The pair then walked for over an hour to reach the main group of searchers. And today, for his actions, Constable Zachary Rolfe is awarded the Bravery Medal. What's going on here? here we go. uh, Zachary Rolfe is a lad born and raised in Canberra. He's not a lad anymore, of course. He's a grown man and he's the sort of fellow that would, as a policeman, look after all of us and rescue us and protect us. And uh, we're extraordinarily proud of what we heard there. I know a little bit more than was read out in the citation in that um, I can say that the, there were language difficulties because these folks were not English speakers and they were tourists, as I understand it, Zach. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so there was all of that uh, in there with uh, these two police officers uh, saving the lives of these folks uh, who were not not able, basically, to understand ordinary direction and, and to comply. So, so much more had to be done for them. And you put your life at risk, you and your colleague, on it several occasions in this whole episode. We're extraordinarily proud of you. Well done, Zach. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the investiture ceremony proper. I now invite the Governor-General to address us. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which we meet, the Ngunnawal people, and pay my respects to the elders past and present, and to elders from other communities who may be with us today. At this ceremony, we recognise Australians who have made an exceptional 
contribution to our nation. It's my privilege to invest those being honoured and I can see uh, the pride on the faces of family and friends who are here sharing this occasion. And the officials who are here today uh, also join me in that uh, great uh, approbation of what we've seen. To each of you recipients, I offer my deepest congratulations and admiration and respect. Now, the ceremony acknowledges your sacrifices and the work you've done without thought of recognition or personal gain. Australians are fortunate to benefit from your passion, your skills, your dedication, and it's fitting that you've been recognised by our honours system. Those honours help to define and encourage and reinforce Australian goals and ideals. They identify role models and they give the next generation something to aspire to. All you recipients now join the company of men and women whose actions have enriched our community and thus our lives. You have a commitment to excellence and your fellow citizens uh, say that this is something to be revered and admired. So on behalf of all Australians, I thank you for your contribution. You inspire us. You motivate all of us to do our very best. I hope you'll remember this day as a day when your nation said thank you and well done. Congratulations. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, can I now invite guests to remain for a few moments while I ask the recipients of awards to be escorted by our staff to the state entrance step for an official photograph with His Excellency. And I'll be back momentarily to invite you all to join us for refreshments. Thank you. <laughs> 